audiences do you normally attract? 99% teenage boys and uh, no, it's, it's a nice sort of mixture. I tend to get couples, a lot of couples, which you sort of think it's the women kind of going, oh, we're going to see Lucy, and the blokes kind of going, oh, God, all right, yeah. Someone once described my shows as like chick lit comedy. I think it was intended as an insult, but I took it as a compliment. You've done work for radio and TV as well. I'm kind of a, a sort of panel show whore. Um, so I've done all the ones that have I got news for you, never mind the Buzzcocks and Mock the Week and stuff like that. And then uh, radio, we did a thing called the personality test, which allowed me to meet Giles Brandreth and Esther Ransom. So, mm. uh, and Lorraine Kelly, who's one of my favourite people in the world. I love her. How does that compare to doing live stand-up? Well, it's nice doing other things, but live stand-up is still the best. I mean, that's why I come to Edinburgh every year, because it's a chance to do a month of live stand-up. I've done one play. Uh, which was up here, which was one over the cuckoo's nest at the assembly rooms with Christian Slater off the films. I, I wouldn't mind doing some more acting, but um, but because I'm not a proper actress, it's like I don't, I wouldn't want to pitch and do something like Midsummer Murders or something. Where have you been best and worst received? I don't know. It's, it sort of seemed arrogant to kind of go. Well, of course they love. Me. I mean, I, I do really love Edinburgh because it's, you know, I kind of feel like I'm at home now and I'm sort of. And it, what's really nice is people come back to see you when you've been doing this, the festival for so long. You get people, like last night I had a couple who came up and said that they've seen every show that I've wow. done for the last five years, which is really nice. Um, so that's kind of nice. And then worst received was probably well, when I started doing comedy, and I, I started off in Manchester doing comedy in working men's clubs, because um, the only women they'd ever had doing anything there were singers or strippers, and I couldn't sing. And, you know, didn't really want to take really your clothes off. Didn't really want to take my clothes off, although at times I did sort of toy with the idea just to try and get through the night. Could you um, sum up for us what the fringe is for someone that maybe hasn't come before, doesn't know what it is, as the expert that you are? It's a month long holiday camp for comedians where we sort of all get drunk and try and have sex with each other. And, um, and then uh, around that, that's the important bit. I mean, it's just there's nothing like it anywhere else in the world. It's got it's something for everyone. Like you can stay out every night until four or five in the morning if you want to. I can't do that anymore, but I used to. And uh, yeah, it's great. I mean, it's just a party. It's a party with art. Your show is called The Bare Necessities. Um, it immediately made me think of The Jungle Book, as yeah, well as the, the kind of fur, fake fur in your poster. Well, largely the reason I called it The Bare Necessities was because I wanted to play the song The Bare Necessities, because I think it's one of the nicest things. At the end of the show, you have a bit of music that you play as people leave the room. And um, I just thought, what could send people out in a good mood more effectively than The Jungle Book, than, than The Bare Necessities? Um, what can we expect from it? It's, it's sort of an anti-credit crunch misery show. So it's basically, there's all this stuff about the credit crunch and how we need to cut back to the bare necessities and everyone needs to save money. And my show is kind of, oh, let's not worry, let's just have a laugh and a drink and a party. I mean, it is about sort of, is it, you know, what's important to you? Is it your family and your friends and sort of emotional things? Or is it things? I've done quite a lot of reading for the show and um, there's so much research about what people think is important. And it's amazing, over 35 year olds, think it's friends and family and emotional things. Under 35, everyone says the one thing they couldn't live without is the internet. And there's another show, I think, as well? I'm also doing a show called Lucy and Des Show Off, uh, which is at the Pleasance also at uh, five o'clock. We're doing some little bits of sketches, uh, me and Des, which is quite, the, mainly sort of improvised nonsense and game shows and lots of silly, silly things. So it's a, it's a very silly, puerile show. We had two 14-year-old boys in yesterday. But they absolutely loved it, of course, because they're, you know, teenage boys. They're going, oh, they said fanny. Oh, great. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so that's, uh, yeah, so it's two, it's nice actually doing two shows because uh, I sort of get a little five o'clock warm up with Des and then get to go and do my show at 7.40 and uh, then I've got the evening free. And it's on in Pleasant's Courtyard at Pleasant's One at 7.40. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure Thank to meet you. you. Absolutely pleasure to meet you. Have a lovely